Hello, and welcome to Stories from the Wire, the AppNet podcast, where we talk to the experts about the most pressing app and network issues facing the enterprise today and tell you how to work smarter, not harder, to speed up resolution. I'm Paul Davenport, AppNet's resident tech journalist, and each week we're going to dive into a specific issue that we've helped an IT team tackle. Today, and over the coming weeks, we're looking at work from home, perhaps the hot topic of the past year, and how enterprises are optimizing their infrastructure to support a work from anywhere future. For today's chat, we're going to look at understanding the root cause of a string of high-profile internet outages that have taken down major parts of the web over the past few weeks, right as many workers were just logging on for the day. As a result, CDM providers Fastly and Akamai have gone from background infrastructure companies to brand names doing damage control, as the biggest takeaway from a lot of the coverage is really that most folks have very, very little understanding of how the internet really works. So, are these outages a trend that we should start anticipating? Are they related to the security concerns we've all had lately around ransomware? And what does this mean for work from anywhere? Is a hybrid work future just simply out of the cards because it's built on a shaky internet foundation? The short and, thankfully, incomplete answer is no. But there are considerations for enterprise IT to get familiar with as you start mapping out strategies to support an increasingly decentralized internet-first organization. To help us unpack, I've invited AppNet's own Alec Pinkham to the show to give us a bit of background on what all these acronyms like CDN actually mean in practice, and how IT and end users alike should view these latest outages. With that, Alec, welcome to the show. Thrilled to get your take here. Thanks, Paul. Glad to be here. All right. So for starters, content delivery networks. Let's break it down. What are these things, and why are they making it impossible for me to read the New York Times over coffee, what feels like once a week? Yeah, so content delivery networks or CDNs are, are really about the replication of resources for websites, web apps, uh, and, and it's really about geographic replication, right? It's the ability to cache content at or near a network edge, and that often takes the form of uh, locating information and data at exchange points or internet exchange points for ISPs so that there's easy access across a host of different connections or a host of different geographies. Uh, it offers features like load balancing, minimization of resources, and things like that. But the, the idea is to get resources for a website or a web app to a user as quickly as possible. And I think uh, when we're talking about a global scale, propagation latency based on the speed of light and actual connections is really what we're dealing with. So you know the big ones we always hear about are Fastly, Cloudflare, Akamai. And then the big three, Google, Microsoft, and AWS all have their own CDNs uh, as well. But as to you know, why, uh, you know, these CDNs are kind of what serves requests for the most visited and most popular apps on the internet. So unless you have that paper subscription to the New York Times, right, news certainly falls into that category. Okay, so in both the Fastly and Akamai scenario, the issue is actually resolved pretty quickly, like in roughly an hour. These outages can happen in such a short time frame. Why can't they be prevented in the first place? Yeah, and you know, you mentioned an hour, and I think what's interesting is the alternative view there is that for a global network, that's actually a pretty quick fix, right? Uh, but when you're talking about availability and you're talking about four nines of availability, really means around 50 minutes of downtime annually. Right, this this is a pretty big deal, and I think you know you covered New York Times things like that. CNN news is obviously one of the ones that gets hit here, but we start to talk about productivity with Spotify, financials with PayPal, and a few others. Right, it was morning for us on the East Coast, but it's also global, uh, so it could have been uh, you know middle of the day or end of the day, depending on if you're Europe, APAC, places like that. Uh, and you know, Fastly and and Akamai really. Uh, Fastly in particular really boils down to a misconfig. Uh, so when you deploy that globally, it does affect the entire caching uh, of the content delivery network. So uh, in this case, you know, requests on the source web servers were one of the problems, right? We increased origin load, basically uh, getting uh, the resources from the original web server is one of the problems, but it, it happened because of a misconfiguration of the caches, which are pulling that data and then serving that to users. So we also saw decreased cache hit ratio. So the number of successful hits over the number over the total number. I think when you're dealing with the largest apps or the most popular apps on the internet, one of the things that we should be talking about is a multi-CDN approach. Uh, and I think as to why we can't prevent this type of change or outage, um, we're human. <laughs> I think regardless of how uh, rigorous or you know the, the testing or oversight, this can still happen. Uh, as, you, as you mentioned, you know, an hour is pretty long, right? With propagation, 
Uh, this is something that Fastly may have detected immediately and took an hour to fix, or it could have been something that they fixed in a minute, but took a while to show up. And I think that may be a little bit more likely, but uh, this also might be the type of issue that you have to impact users or you have to see the metrics from users in order to actually detect it. And so I think one of the biggest things that you want as a consumer of these apps or as a customer of potentially business critical apps on the internet is, is really visibility into where this is breaking down uh, so that you can contact the right people uh, or even visit the right status page, right? Understanding uh, not who's at fault particularly, but that obviously comes into play, um, but understanding kind of whether or not you can fix it or whether or not this is something you have to ask somebody else to work on. Gotcha. Okay. So now when these outages start impacting work, or at least a worker's ability to start their day, maybe, what can enterprise IT do to, if not resolve the scenario, assuage it a little bit, since it sounds like the issue is largely out of their hands? Yeah, in, in this case, it is. And, and I think redundancy is the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, there are really two different app scenarios or use cases that I think about, right? If this is a revenue generating app for your enterprise, then you're definitely going to want redundancy in place. Uh, if you're just consuming SaaS, and I say just, but if that is something that is business critical uh, for you, uh, then you do want to be aware as you purchase or use these apps uh, where, uh, where your single points of failure are or where your points of failure could be. Um, but in, in both cases, right, isolating where a problem is uh, takes visibility into the whole or into the entire path. And I think figuring out that scope is the first step. But uh, in another vein, I also think understanding the dependencies of your applications is a really important point here. So if your core app is you know, backed by a CDN and you have multiple uh, different ways to connect into that, then that's great. But if it relies on data from external APIs or third parties, then you're certainly going to have uh, some places where there's a single point of failure there. So I think all of this really calls into action better visibility into the apps we use day to day. Uh, some of the apps that were affected this time uh, are certainly not always the business critical ones that we think about most teams, Office 365 and a lot of those, um, but a lot of them are going to be based on the same architectures. And so understanding uh, where those apps are coming from and uh, for a global user base, kind of how they're connecting to those apps is pretty important. Gotcha. All right. So the big million dollar question. Does any of this mean that we should put a pin in work from anywhere in hybrid work? Should we brace for more of these outages going forward, or do we just accept them as part of the new reality? Tell me that the sky isn't falling, basically. Yeah, no, the sky is not falling, not at all. I, I think these issues stem from a pretty complex system uh, called the internet, but also called how we deliver apps today. Uh, we all knowingly or unknowingly rely on it. And I think what this is doing is just, it's giving us uh, a little bit more clarity on how these apps are being delivered to users every day. Um, I think we, we could brace for more of these, but I'd rather plan around them uh, by doing as much as I can to keep business critical apps resilient. Redundancy is one way to do that, but I think also making sure that there are uh, backups for communication, right? We saw this a lot during the pandemic. If you were on Teams and that broke or Skype uh, back in the day, uh, people are gonna create a Slack channel and, and use some other type of communication. So understanding that as IT and making sure that we plan for it is pretty important. I think it'll never be perfect, uh, but if IT can get visibility into all of the critical parts of the application delivery path, then you can spend a lot less time in the war room and understanding uh, where these problems are stemming from will be a lot easier. So I think the sky is not falling, but if recent security issues and these types of outages are kind of brought into the forefront, uh, then we should be taking a closer look at them. Gotcha. So the whole goal is to make sure they don't catch you fully off guard, but we can never fully prepare for them. Getting visibility in place is key because the internet is imperfect, just like us. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much, Alec. I appreciate you giving us time today. And thank you listeners for joining us on Stories from the Wire, the AppNet podcast. Subscribe to our feed to get the latest tips and tricks every week on how to manage network performance for the future of work. <laughs>